What's up dudes, Chooch, bringing you the Veteran Sherman Street Review. This is going to be the full-on urban aspect of what I think about this Sherman. I'm going to be bringing y'all the full-on off-road review soon. Got to get a little bit more riding on the trails to really narrow it down and bring home my points. But for road riding, which I've done a lot of on this thing since I've got it, I'm going to have to tell y'all, you know, every aspect of it, what I like about it, the stability factor, you know, what's going on with this wheel let's get into it right now so this right here is the absolute ultimate hack to la traffic right now with gas prices pushing five dollars a gallon man this is the ultimate solution if you are a city dweller i'm telling you over an electric scooter over an electric bike this right here is what you're going to want to get guys and the reason i can tell you that you're going to want to get this over, say, an electric bike immediately because there's going to be those people that say, oh, why don't you just get an e-bike? Why don't you just get an e-bike? Guess how many times you would have your e-bike stolen as opposed to having one of the, these. You would have that e-bike stolen 15 times in just the run of having one of these. And the simple fact, guys, this is it. This is the deal sealer right here if you need to hear it. You can take this inside anywhere you go. It has a pop-up little handle right in the middle right there. You literally get off of it, you pop the handle up in the middle, and you push it in like a suitcase to wherever you need to go. And in the world we live in right now, where law enforcement is basically not able to do their job in a lot of places due to legislation, and stealing a bike is becoming, it's not even a crime anymore in a lot of places. Where I mean, literally people can just take bikes, apparently. I think that's, it's just like it's allowed for some reason nowadays. I don't understand it. If this is my first time ever seeing this video, I'd want to see an up close of it. So this is an up close of this specific unicycle right here, the Veteran Sherman. You can get upgraded foot plates for these things. You can get you get 3D printed side pads on it. You know, around here, people customize them. These are a few other ones that I have all customized in some way, go all the way around. It becomes an addiction. I got a whole room in here ready for this, you know, ready for this whole hobby. And so this is an up close of what it looks like. Just because if I was seeing the video, for the first time, I kind of want to up close of it. Been riding a day, it's a little bit dirty. Having, having a great time on it. But, you know, all customized in some way, you can really DIY these things and just have fun with it, even when you're not riding. But like I was saying, one undeniable factor of this, as opposed to anything there is in the entire world, is the convenience factor. And once you get decently good on this thing, it literally is the number one form of transportation in the world hands down for your daily commutes unless you're buying a jet pack that can get around without even causing noise or something like that even you know even a jet pack in these situations like that wouldn't be more wouldn't be something that's more beneficial than this particular thing and by the reason i'm saying that the reason i'm so keen on insisting on it is because you can take this inside wherever you go you can literally have it with you at all times and always have it in sight. I don't care if you're, I've, I've gone to the zoo, to the museum, to the courthouse. I've gone to, you name it, to the mall. I've gone any, you name the place, I've, I've gone there with it. If I go to the courthouse, I literally take it, I take the smaller one I have, I put it up on the conveyor belt, goes through, goes through the thing, I scan it right in like it's nothing, you know. This is a part of me, this is like, this is literally what I do, this is how I get around, you know. And uh, uh, yes, I have a, a vehicle, but I use that for long range stuff, or stuff where I really got to go, you know, where I can just get on this and go moving and grooving and get somewhere where I don't have to use any gas money, I don't have to sit in traffic, I don't have to get frustrated with, with people, I can really move and groove on this thing, making all my decisions, I can really look at traffic i can know what's going on with stuff and i can just basically it's like a short range little teleport teleportation device and i guess you, you could say long range because this particular wheel right here can go 128 miles on a charge and that's you know assuming a 170 pound rider going about 20 miles an hour so cranking on it like this really hard ripping it yes you'll get less but you'll still get like 85 to 90 miles out of it riding it as hard as you can you know so this is just something so convenient. It's like a little superpower that you can have under your desk at work. You can have it right by your door ready to go. It's grab and go. You don't have to fiddle with a lock when you get there. You don't have to find a spot to lock it up. You don't have to worry about looking every 10 minutes outside of your bike to make sure some 
moron isn't out there undoing the wheel, stealing the brakes off of it, whatever it may be, you can have it next to you. You have that peace of mind right there. Also, you say, okay, well, I'll get an electric scooter. The electric scooters, yeah, that's another thing. I had a buddy that got one of those, and dude, coming into work with that electric scooter, you have to, it's, it's cumbersome. That thing is heavy. You know, that electric scooter can be heavy, it can be awkward, it can be weird, because you got to, like, pick it up to get it in. With this, you literally keep it turned on while you pop the trolley handle out of the top of it and just roll it in to wherever you need to go. So just convenience factor right there, that's the number one reason to get a unicycle right there. So what can this thing do? This thing can go 45 plus miles an hour with like a 250 pound rider. I can personally get it up to about 52 miles an hour. The weight on this particular wheel right here is 77 pounds. You could charge it up to 80% charge in about six hours with the charger that it does come with. The max load on it, so if you're a heavier guy and you're thinking about getting into this, this wheel right here from the factory says it can support up to a 330 pound rider on it. And that is ridiculous. You think about the technology, the power in this thing to support a rider really leaning forward, torquing on this thing, braking, you know, it's there. So if you're a lighter weight rider like me, you can literally give this thing all you have. You can lean as hard as you want. You can accelerate, brake, everything as hard as you want without having to ever consider the machine may be given out on you or the machine may be not taking it, you know? With like those other hoverboards that came out in 2015, you know, you don't want to get on that thing and lean as hard as you can into the sun thinking it's going to go 50 miles an hour because it can't, you know, it's going to cut off on you at like seven. With this, you literally are not restrained at all by the device itself. And if you really want to think about it, that's a big stage to come to in um, something this for in this form factor that can transport a human being around like this at uh, this speed with you know with no handlebars. That's just absolutely that convenient. It takes up that little bit of space. They can go that far on a charge. You know, this really is a turning point. I'd say in history, you know, as a history major, you look at this and technology and devices right here, and yes, unicycle, electric unicycles were a thing, but up until now, this right here is the breakthrough. This is really a device that's not limiting the human at all, and it's something that's literally like the, it gives me the same kind of vibe as like an RC car. You can literally get on, it's that small and you can really just get as much power and as use as you would want out of it. You know, you really don't want any more out of something like this unless it gets way more lightweight, full suspension, etc. Then you, you could really, um, the, the far, uh, next thing I see in these things is like a nuclear reactor inside of it and then like super suspension and then we can just go as far as we want. You know, that's what I want to see. But otherwise, um, you know, this is just, pretty pretty wild where we're at in the stage of this and even as someone that rides it as much as i have and been riding as long as i have i mean it still blows my mind every time i get on it you know and just um this is really is a superpower you know i'm you looked at as a history major you know you look back on this there's this would literally absolutely be the number one, I mean, you go back in time and you brought this to a dinner party in 1905 and showed people, you know, what this was. I mean, the world would have developed around this thing and there would have been people really, really, I mean, it would have been a completely different society, you know? And I want to see people adopt these things. I want to see people get on them and society really start using them because it could take a city like this of four million people, for example, and literally make, you could make the roads um, one tenth of the size and everybody could still get around the inner city you know if need be in the future you know it, I mean this really is it's going to change a lot of stuff you know if, if people get on board and it's just one of those things where people might not and at the end of the day I'm cool with that too because I got a superpower that other people don't you know and um, I'll be the first whenever jetpacks come out because that's another thing I'm looking at like dead serious I would absolutely if there is one it was affordable, I could finance, I'd have it right now, you know. But just your general stability on this thing for going around town, for just your general riding around the street is second to none. I, the other unicycles I had, it felt like I literally was on a Fisher Price toy. This feels like I'm 
legit on a military piece of equipment that rides great in traffic. I got full control over it. I can accelerate around cars pulling out. I can really be nimble on it. I can be quick when I need to. My acceleration's there and my top speed is there. That 50 miles an hour is everything you're gonna need until you basically get on a highway. You know, anywhere around town, I can go up to speed faster than any car. The only thing that's gonna challenge me off the line is maybe another Tesla or something like that with an electric motor in it. But otherwise, I'm faster off the line than any car in town. If you would like to pick up this specific unicycle or any other ones, any good entry level ones, any e-scooters, anything like that, click the links below there, affiliate links, they help me keep bringing you this fresh content and it's really greatly appreciated if you do that. I'm about to get kicked out of the Dolby Theater here and go rip around the rest of Hollywood for the day. But anyways guys, if y'all enjoyed the video, throw it a thumbs up and I will see y'all in the next one.